Well, yeah, discovered and rediscovered. That's it's it's, it's interesting. Um, some music that I continually, I think, rediscover is gamelan music from Bali. Or I've really, uh, I've become quite interested, although, you know, it's kind of a he here and there kind of experience, but listening to singers from India and Pakistan. Things like that that are completely un-piano related, you know. Or listening to John Cage's Prepare Piano Music, which is very rhythmic and, you know, there's a piece he wrote uh, called A Book of Music for Two Prepared Pianos. And it's really kind of funky, it's nice, beautiful, very rhythmic. Um, I love a lot of Martin Feldman's later long, quiet pieces. Um, and I've had a quiet summer. So I've made it a mission to go out and listen to as much music as possible this summer. So I've been checking out some of my fellow pianists, you know, Russ Lossing is one. He's not, people don't know him the way they should. I've been going to hear Connie Carruthers. I've heard them both two or three times this summer. And just going out to hear people I don't even know, which is a beautiful thing because living in New York, you know, it's an embarrassment of riches, music-wise. So you can, you can just walk down the street and there's music playing somewhere, you go in and Maybe you like it, maybe you don't, but there's a ton of great music out here. And it's beautiful to keep discovering that. And actually, as an educator, I'm running into my students and former students here. So that's a beautiful thing, you know, to see the whole thing. Because there is a tradition, you know, and it's all handed down from one person to another. So I've handed my part down, to, and. Now I'm running into him backstage. It's a beautiful thing. My creative process revolves mostly around taking long walks at night. I write most of my tunes on a park bench. I don't write them at the piano. I'll sit there on a park bench. I look at the skyline of Manhattan and the moon is up and I'll sit on a park bench and hear melodies and try to keep them in my head until I can get them down on paper. And then they take shape from there. But my whole, my whole, uh, my methods as a composer, I don't even think of myself as a composer. Um, I write little songs and little sketches and ideas. I don't flesh things out because I want that to happen in the process. For me, the product is like a byproduct. The, the process is the thing that's most important to me. So, for instance, my bands don't rehearse. Don't rehearse. I trust you, that's why I hired you. I trust you to do what you do. I like the way you play. I'm not gonna tell you what or how to play. If you play multiple instruments, I'll bring a tune in, it will be in concert pitch, and you will play it on whichever instrument you think is appropriate, right? So it's all about trusting, and it's all about leaving as much to the people playing the music as possible, you know, without hanging them out to dry. You know, that's, I'm not about that. I'm about giving them enough information so that they can find their place in it and we can find our place together on the bandstand with people in the audience. So my idea of a performance is to allow the audience to eavesdrop on our conversation. So it's not about perfection. It's not about a show. I don't plan sets ever. Playing solo tomorrow, I have no idea what I'm gonna play. I mean, I know a lot of music, you know? And that will tell me what to play in that moment. So obviously, if you're playing with an 18-piece band, you can't do that. But that's why I don't have an 18-piece band. Uh, 
it enables me to, to be as free as possible in the music and to let the other guys do the same. So I just say my name? And are we ready to go now? Yep. We're ready? And then clap, just so you... Okay. I'm Frank Kimbrough.